In this video, we're going to start the CUDA software Infinite Geometry Free Worksheet Multi-Step Trig Problems. Our directions in this worksheet are to find the length of the side labeled x. We're going to round our intermediate values to the nearest tenth, and then use those rounded values to calculate the next value. And then we're rounding our answer also to the nearest tenth. So number one, we're going to need to calculate the height of this triangle, which is represented by this dashed blue line. And once we figure that out, then we'll be able to solve for x. The angle given to us in the right triangle on the left hand side is 39 degrees. The height is opposite that angle, and we're given the adjacent side of that angle, which has a length of 38. So with opposite and adjacent, think TOA, tangent. So the tangent of that 39 degree angle is equal to the opposite side length, which is our unknown, we'll call y. So that's equal to y over the adjacent side of 38. Now our next step is to solve for y by multiplying both sides by 38. So typing 38 times the tangent of 39 into your calculator, remembering to be in degree mode, you'll get 30.77, which rounds to 30.8. So 30.8 is y now we can see that this angle is 60 degrees. The opposite side is y, which we got to be 30.8. And the hypotenuse is x. So if we're given the opposite side and the hypotenuse, we are now going to be using sine. So the sine of 60 degrees equals our opposite side length, which we calculated to be 30.8 over our hypotenuse of x. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x. In doing this, the x in the denominator will cancel out. So we'll have x times the sine of 60 degrees equal to 30.8. So finally, we're going to divide by the sine of 60 degrees. Sine of 60 divided by sine of 60 is 1, and 1 times x is x, and then if we take 30.8 and divide that by the sine of 60 degrees, we will get 35.56, which rounds to 35.6. So 35.6 is x in number one. In number two, you can see our right angle of that triangle on our left, and we're given this angle of 35 degrees. However, we need to calculate for the shared side in order to solve for x. And that shared side relating to the angle of 35 degrees is the adjacent side. So we're going to be solving for the adjacent side given the opposite side of 35 degrees is 9. So think TOA. The tangent of 35 degrees equals the opposite side length 9 over the adjacent side length, which is our unknown. Let's use the variable y again. So now in order to solve for y, I have to multiply both sides by y to get that out of the denominator. So y times the tangent of 35 degrees is equal to nine. So my next step will be to divide by the tangent of 35 degrees. And by dividing by the tangent of 35 degrees, I'll isolate my y to get that y is equal to 9 divided by the tangent of 35, which is 12.85, which will round to 12.9. So this height of the triangle y is equal to 12.9. But remember, we're solving for x. Given that this angle is 61 degrees, x is opposite that angle of 61 degrees, and the adjacent side is y. So again, think tangent. TOA, the tangent of 61 degrees equals the opposite side length x over our adjacent side length, which we calculated to be 12.9. So now we're just going to multiply both sides by 12.9. In doing this, 12.9 divided by 12.9 is 1, so x over 1 is x, and 12.9 times the tangent of 61 equals 23.27 which rounds to 23.3. So 23 and 3 tenths is our solution in number two. X is 23 and 3 tenths.
Now in number three, we're going to have to create that shared side. So drawing a line perpendicular will give me two 90 degree angles. So now we have two separate right triangles. And if we're solving for x, we need to find the sh shared side length, which is the height of our triangle. Let's call this y. Now this angle of 50 degrees, y is opposite that angle and x is our hypotenuse. So if we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, think sine. So the sine of 50 degrees equals our opposite side length y over our hypotenuse of x. So we need to solve for y. And in order to solve for y, we first need to calculate either this angle or this angle of the triangle since we're given the hypotenuse. So y is either going to be the adjacent side or it's going to be the opposite side. Let's calculate this angle. Remember we split this angle into two separate angles, but the original angle was 101 degrees. Using the triangle sum theorem, we can calculate this angle and then subtract that from 101 to get the angle we're looking for. So remember, the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we subtract the angles that we do know, we'll be able to calculate this third angle. So one angle is 90 degrees and the other angle is 50 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 90 plus 50 is 180 degrees minus 140 degrees. 180 minus 140 is 40 degrees. So this angle is 40 degrees. Knowing that that is 40 degrees, we can take 101 degrees and subtract 40 degrees to get the angle we're looking for, which 101 minus 40 degrees will give us 61 degrees. So using that angle of 61 degrees, y is our adjacent side, and we know the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, think k. So we're going to be using the cosine of 61 degrees, the angle that we calculated from that original 101 degree angle, is going to equal our adjacent side y over our hypotenuse of 23. And we're solving for y, so we can plug that in to solve for x. So we're going to multiply both sides by 23. That'll help us isolate y on the right hand side of our equation. And 23 times the cosine of 61 is 11.15, which rounds to 11.2. So y is 11.2. So knowing that y is 11.2, we can plug that in. So the sine of 50 degrees equals 11.2 over x. We'll multiply both sides by x to get that out of the denominator. So x times the sine of 50 degrees equals 11.2. Next, we'll divide by the sine of 50. And dividing by the sine of 50, we'll get x all by itself. So x equals 11.2 divided by the sine of 50. Entering that in on our calculators, we'll get 14.62, which rounds to 14.6. So x is equivalent to 14.6 and number three. And lastly, in this video, I'll go over number four. And number four, essentially we're doing the same types of steps we've done in number three. We're going to create two right triangles by drawing a line that's perpendicular to the base. So we have one right triangle on the left and another right triangle on the right. We're solving for x given that this is 44 degrees. So we need to know the opposite side length, which is that shared side, and x is the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse think so. So we're going to be using the sine of 44 degrees in order to find out what x is. Let's call this opposite side length y, and the opposite side length is going to be over the hypotenuse of x. So now let's figure out what y is. We know that this total angle is 71 degrees, however we split that angle into two separate angles. So we're going to be using the triangle sum theorem to solve for the angle in the left hand right triangle. So 180 degrees minus 44 degrees plus 90 degrees will give us part of that 71 degree angle. So 180 minus 44 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees minus 44 plus 90, which is 134. So 180 degrees 
minus 134 is 46 degrees. So if this angle is 46 degrees, then 71 degrees minus 46 degrees will give us the angle we're looking for, which is 25 degrees. So now using that angle of 25 degrees, y is adjacent to that angle, and we have the hypotenuse of 12. So think ka, cosine, adjacent and hypotenuse. The cosine of 25 degrees equals adjacent y over our hypotenuse of 12. So all I'm going to do is multiply 12 to both sides. So y is equal to 12 times the cosine of 25, which is 10.87, and we'll round that to 10.9, 10 and 9 tenths. So 10.9 is the height of this triangle, which is y. Now that we know y, we can plug that in to our equation in order to solve for x. Remember, the sine of 44 degrees equals y over x, and y is 10.9. So we'll have 10.9 over x, so we'll multiply x to both sides to get that x times the sine of 44 degrees equals 10.9. My last and final step is to divide by sine of 44. And when I divide by the sine of 44 degrees, my x will be left on my left hand side of my equation and 10.9 divided by the sine of 44 will equal 15.69, which rounds to 15.7. So 15 and 7 tenths is my solution in number four. And I'll stop this video here. Join me in the next video where I'll complete the next four problems in this worksheet. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, like, subscribe, and share.